Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Gayla Tia Strong. I'm a physical therapist who got a 100% on my NPTE, and this led me to co-found SPT with me, which is an online NPTE study platform. If you end up enjoying this video and feel like it was beneficial, please feel free to check out our courses at sptwithme.com for our full NPTE studying experience designed to guide you towards acing your test. Now, on to what you're actually here for, let's talk about scapulohumeral rhythm. Scapulohumeral rhythm and shoulder biomechanics. Why is learning about the shoulder joint so complex relative to our other joints? Well, we are faced with not only one, not only two, not three, but four joints. We have our sternoclavicular joint, a chromioclavicular joint, scapulothoracic joint, and glenohumeral joint. Let's talk about the sternoclavicular joint first. Movements that can occur at this joint include elevation, depression, protraction, retraction, along with axial rotation. Now, when we move our shoulder into abduction, what happens at this particular joint is that the clavicle will retract, it's going to elevate, and it's going to externally rotate in order to really get that full range of motion into shoulder abduction. Now let's talk about the acromioclavicular joint. Movements that can occur at this joint, and just so you understand, this could be flexion. It doesn't have to just be abduction. It could be internal, external rotation, whatever it is. This, these are the potential movements at this joint. So it can be upward and downward rotation, internal and external rotation, along with anterior and posterior tipping. So during shoulder abduction, what happens at this specific joint includes the scapula, posteriorly tilting, the scapula will upwardly rotate and it will externally rotate. The clavicle will posteriorly rotate. Now the scapulothoracic joint, before we start talking about movements and movements during abduction, understand that this is not considered a true joint and this is because it does not contain the normal components of what we understand joints to have, including ligaments, joint capsules, etc. However, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but you need to understand that the mobility of this joint or not joint is very crucial in providing optimal shoulder elevation biomechanics. Now to movements, what this um, joint can do is elevate, it can depress, protract, retract, externally rotate, internally rotate. Now during shoulder abduction, what happens specifically at this joint is that the scapula posteriorly tilts, upwardly rotates, and externally rotates. Now this seems very, very similar to what happens at the AC joint, right? Now keep in mind that the scapula is part of both of these. It's part of the scapulothoracic joint, it's part of the acromioclavicular joint, right? The acromion is on the scapula. The glenohumeral joint. Movements that occur, flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal and external rotation, along with circumduction. Movements that can occur include humerus abduction and external rotation. Now onto the fun stuff, the actual biomechanics. So we know that normal shoulder abduction range of motion is 180 degrees. Now out of this 180, 120 degrees comes from one of our joints, the glenohumeral joint. The remainder, the 60 degrees that remain to get to that 180, it comes from the combination of movement from the AC joint and the SC joint, so the acromioclavicular and sternoclavicular joint. Now these remaining 60 degrees from both of these joints requires elevation from the SC joint, sternoclavicular, and upward rotation of the AC joint. Now onto another idea. So the glenohumeral joint is what initiates abduction up until it reaches 30 degrees. So from zero to 30 degrees of shoulder abduction, the only movement is really coming from this GH joint. Now when we go from 30 to 180 degrees between that, this is when the chromioclavicular and SC joint, sternoclavicular joints come into play. From 30 to 180 degrees, there is about a two to one ratio of movement. Two coming from the glenohumeral joint and one coming from both the AC and SC joints. 
So what this means is that for every 20 degrees of movement into abduction from the GH joint, there is 10 degrees or there are 10 degrees of movement coming from the combination of the AC and SC joints. Now I wanted to talk a little bit more about the ST joint. So here is a consideration. I want you to think about your rhomboid muscle. So your rhomboids, when they're activated, they induce both scapular retraction and downward rotation. However, in shoulder abduction, we need upward rotation, right? To actually get the shoulder up there or the arm up there. Now, if your rhomboids are tight, again, it does the exact opposite. Your scapula in turn will be limited in its ability to actually do its job and raise up to get that full range of motion. So this is an exact reason why even though the scapula thoracic joint is not considered a true joint, it has to be assessed in order to see what is going on with what our patient is coming in for. So you probably clicked this video because you were feeling a little bit overwhelmed with the shoulder joint and rightfully so i mean there's a lot going on in this joint so in order to really get it down you have to break the shoulder up into its components so it's four joints right you can understand all of those separately then you put it together in what's known as the scapulohumeral rhythm and it should help a ton I am truly hoping that this video was helpful to you. I'm hoping that scapulohumeral rhythm and every aspect of the shoulder joint in general, all four of the components, all of the bony anatomy and seeing kind of in your head how it moves and should move in a regular movement. I'm hoping it all makes a little bit more sense. Now again, I instruct the courses on sptwithme.com. We have more than six hours worth of content that is specifically designed to get you to pass and potentially ace your NPTE just like I did. Please leave any comments, questions, feedback, whatever it is. I wholeheartedly appreciate it. Stay on the lookout for more videos by subscribing. Lastly, here are the references. These are all very, very helpful. I just kind of extracted a bunch of different information, hoping that it'll make it a little bit more manageable for you guys. You guys have got this.